nominees. She's played everything from Tanya Harding to Mary Queen of Scots to Sharon Tate. She is Barbie. Please welcome Margot Robbie. <laughs> for being here. Congratulations on not just a great movie, but really a, a phenomenon. Uh, this is primarily an audience of your SAG after actors. Ooh, oh, yeah. So I always look yeah. at <laughs> So... Do you still have it? I still have it, yeah. I have it. I, you know, I think I had a, I had one week where I got three parts, all five and under, on three different TV shows. And one of them was, was a SAG app. Wait, it, it, they hadn't merged yet, so oh, yeah. one was set, yeah. But I did a, a, um, a living single. There's an episode with me on a living single. Um, the George Went Show. What? Yeah. And then um, uh, Grace Under Fire. Oh, wow. Okay. And so between those three, I, yeah. I got my card. It was amazing. Yeah. George Winshow. I don't even George Winshow. Yeah. Who wow. There's somewhere out there. There's eight episodes of them. <laughs> you, if you search really hard on YouTube, I'm sure you can find them. By the way, um, we'll volunteer to answer questions for Ryan since he's not able to be here. So how did Ryan get his SAG card? Let's see. Ryan's Canadian, so he might not have probably one. Mickey Mouse Club, possibly, right? Yeah. yeah let's go with that. <laughs> More importantly, how did he get those abs? Am I right? <laughs> if you know that secret, please tell us. I think they're fake. <laughs> I don't think those are real. Those are implants, right? Margo would know. I, my first job I ever booked at 17 years old was a Disney Channel movie called Gotta Kick It Up. <laughs> Takers. Um, and I got my side card. Yeah, first job out. I did a TV show called Pan Am. Yes. 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 No? Pan Am, Pan Am. Yeah. yeah, thank you. No, you know why I know that? I have the board game. There's a spin-off board game. Is it? <laughs> what? <laughs> you don't get, you don't get, I didn't get residuals on the board game. Um, no, I didn't know that existed. What is it? Well, yeah, uh, when you buy shares in Pan Am. Uh, yeah, I know. It sounds <laughs> as in heaven. What a fun game. <laughs> I hate to reveal how cool I am, but yes, I, I have the Pan Am War game. Um, well, again, congratulations on a wonderful, funny, and insightful film. Uh, Margo, I know this was a real passion project for you. You optioned the rights. You had the genius idea to go to Greta Gerwig. What was it about Barbie that spoke to you, and, and how did you know, you know who the perfect collaborators were? It felt like a really big, exciting opportunity, Barbie is just known all around the world. And there's something a little bit, I, I think we at Lucky Chap kind of run at the scary things. And I think when, you, when there's something that scares you a bit, you end up really having to run at that scary thing in order to be able to you know, tackle it. And, uh, and, and in doing so, you end up, I don't know, just finding potent ideas and, and there's just, I don't know, I like swinging for the fences, and so this seemed like a big and exciting, uh, you know, swinging for the fences kind of thing. And of course, Greta, I had wanted to work with her for years, um, and what I recognized in her work that I knew a Barbie movie would need to have is a big beating heart, mainly, um, because all the funny, all the jokes, all the clever, all the things, like none of that matters if, if it doesn't like hit you in here. And, and her work always hits me like that. Uh, I also know she is incredibly funny and incredibly smart and really cares about filmmaking and Hollywood history and, and old school filmmaking techniques, which you see implemented in this movie to, you know, in a, such a spectacular way. So she just ticked so many boxes and, um, and I like her and wanted to be friends with her. And now we're friends. <laughs> so you hired her and now you get to be friends. Yeah, that's, that's so smart. <laughs> um, I had a question for you, but also for Ryan, if Will wants to jump in. <laughs> but, but the challenge of, of playing a doll, I mean, it's a, it's a delicate balance because you have to play into 
the stereotypes that we know about them, but they also proved to be so much more complex and three-dimensional than we might expect. How, how did you even start with, with bringing Barbie to life? Ryan, do you want to go first? <laughs> <laughs> you were going to regret all of this. <laughs> it, um, it's funny, speaking of Ryan, I didn't know I, when we rehearsed, you know, when the, you know, Greta and Ryan and I, when we did rehearsals together, I, he was playing it quite small, actually, in rehearsals, and I thought, oh, oh, I'm going to have to pull it back quite a bit. He's, he's doing a very grounded version of Ken. And, um, and then once we got to set, it was like he turned it up to like 100. And I was like, oh, great, we're going big with it. Um, and so part of it was calibrating your performance so that you didn't mess with the tone or you could live up to the tone at the right moments. And there are a lot of moments where we really play up the doll-like physicality and like, you know, like, you know, roll over and um, all that kind of stuff is so fun. And I love, I love physical comedy so much and I love watching the genius comedians of the past and I, it, that stuff's always really appealed to me. So I love that aspect of it, but at the same time, there needed to be the moments where Barbie's interacting with humans and having very emotional moments and beats and that all needed to exist in the same world. So it was about mapping out the, the, the kind of journey, the evolution or, um, you know, from being a doll to being human. And we did that in a lot of kind of, um, you know, physical ways with my wigs getting smaller, the hair getting less voluminous, shorter, you know, until by the end it's like, oh, she kind of looks like me. Um, and, and the movement also and, and the cadence of the way that um, Barbie spoke, I wanted at the beginning to it, for it to be very definitive, and very, you know, she's never second guessed anything. And there's so many concepts that have never, you know, she's never been exposed to. So she exists with total certainty and then uncertainty creeps in and then, you know, her speech patterns kind of change and the register of her voice goes down a little bit and the way she's dressing and looking and just by the end, you're like, oh yeah, she does kind of look like a human now. Is was the plan, that was the plan. Do you think Ryan was conserving his energy or is it a matter of you get on these sets and you can't help but go a little big? I don't know. I guess everyone like rehearses in different ways and but yeah, but he def there was no conserving energy once we got to set. This, this was like, you had to be at a hundred. One of my favorite scenes I got to do with him is where we're both having just massive meltdowns um, where he's throwing all of Barbie's clothes off the dream house and he's like, take your pretty palazzo and I'm like, take the palazzo! And it's just so ridiculous and big and so fun to, anyways, you're a room full of actors, you know, going big is so fun. It, it's, it was so great to do that. And then very um, uh, exposing to do those vulnerable moments. So it's actually very, felt very like, oh gosh, I really revealed myself in those moments. Uh, speaking of America, Gloria in, in, in so many ways speaks for the audience, including this remarkable monologue about, you know, what it means to be a woman. Was that the sort of thing that when you read it on the page, you knew it was going to resonate with people? You knew you had something special? I mean, I felt that way about the whole script. It was pretty obvious just a couple pages in that, um, that it was so unique and so special and um, so funny and smart and all the things. Um, you know, being asked to represent the whole human race, you're welcome. <laughs> Barbie Land was a, a true honor. Um, but also, you know, a real kind of um, a tug of war of like, well, well, what happens to a real human in Barbie Land? Like, am I now a Barbie? And like, or, or I'm supposed to stay a human? I'm supposed to remain a human? on these sets and with these performances and you know, and we started in Barbie land too. So trying to find human characters, you know, right off the bat, the first thing we shot was us on the, um, the speedboat. And we're like on a totally pretend set on a speedboat. Um, and I was like, I don't know what I'm, what the tone is, but you know, thank God Greta knew exactly what she wanted and what she was looking for. And so, you know, that's the speech. Yes, I, I, it hit me the first time I read it, and I knew that it was special, and I knew that it was important, and I knew that I was just my job was to not mess it up. Um, but I also didn't know exactly how Greta heard it. You know, I didn't know if I don't know why, but I assumed that we would, you know, cover ourselves and do versions that were lighthearted or like more in the tone of Barbie land or, you know, trying to say these truths, but in a way that could 
go down easier, you know? And Greta just never asked me to do that. She just wanted that moment to be real and true. And, and luckily at that point, I just had total faith in her and was able to go for it. But I honestly had no idea how it was gonna fit into the larger tone of the piece. So you shot it early on then? No, no, it was like one of the last things we oh, shot. Okay. Yeah, no, we did Barbie Land and then we came here for some real world stuff and then we went back to Barbie Land. It was like America bottled that speech up for the whole yeah. shoot. And then the day that she like released it into the world, it was wild. Yeah. Like sitting there front row, it was like you couldn't breathe. It was, and she did it so many times, like again and again and again. And it was at that level, I'm telling you, every time. Like, there was no like, oh, they'll probably pick take three and seven because those were the ones where she really went for it. It's like every single one was that, that level. And I was in tears every time. And one of the ADs came up and she was like, you don't need to cry, you're not on camera. And I was like, I'm not trying to cry. I'm trying not to cry. <laughs> that was the same for me, honestly, because I had the view of you two both. And I was just sitting there on my little stoop. And I just remember like, it's fully just like watching a live play yeah. every single time. You did something new every single time. I didn't know what to expect and you killed it. I was crying. My character obviously isn't the most affectionate and loving person, but I really, really couldn't help it because even like being on set with you guys and incredible women every single day and being, I was 14 at the time, but being 16 now, it's like you feel seen and Everyone, I guess, here feels seen watching the movie, so you killed it. And I'm like, well, I honored to see you do that so much. One of my favorite memories is... I tried to get the monologue cut out. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to get it cut out. That was well, you, you, well, you tried to take it first. I tried to take tried it. To, I was like, I think the deliver. CEO should probably say yeah. this, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Well, one of my favorite memories on set was when we were done shooting the monologue. Ariana, we went back to our chairs and she just started reciting the entire thing. She had memorized the entire monologue and I made her do it. I have it on my iPhone. And and that's actually when I, I started to cry because the words started coming out of her mouth and then I was like, oh, that's hard to listen to, okay. Ariana, I would think one of the hardest part of your jobs was to be not affectionate towards America. <laughs> it was really hard, wasn't it, Ariana? <laughs> so, so hard, yeah. No, you do, you have these wonderful scenes together. You, you do feel like mother and daughter for all the good and bad that entails. Did that relationship develop pretty instantly? Oh yeah, absolutely. I think one of the first days when I landed in London and I met the whole cast, I think you guys were doing dance rehearsals. America was like, give me your number, we're gonna go to dinner, we're gonna go to lunch, we're gonna go for tea, because we were in London. And I remember we went to this place, I think it was called Sketch in London, and that was the first, it was like one-on-one, -on -one, just us. And we were talking about everything, and it was kind of like an immediate click. And it, you know, the, my favorite thing working with people is like having a, lo a level of comfortability with them, because you can kind of just feel free to do whatever you want, especially with a mother-daughter relationship, which you can't get closer than that. Um, America was like, she was great. And I just remember there was one day, I think we were filming with Michael, we were doing like the car flip scene, something. We were in like this little tunnel hut, whatever, and we were eating snacks, and we just were dying laughing. I don't know why, I think we were just tired. But like, I just always like have that core memory of looking at you and like, we were just eating snacks and we were hot and we were whatever and we were just dying laughing over who knows what. But yeah, the connection I think was pretty instant and it was so hard to just be so rude every day. <laughs> it fueled me, yeah. it really fueled me. And that, that moment in the car where I'm like, let's go get my Barbie and we do the hand, the yeah. hand thingy, that was actually a very truncated version of a much longer secret handshake <laughs> that Ariana made, like you forced us to make like yeah. the first week we were filming and Greta would, why, you can see it in some of the BTS, right? As like for no reason practicing this silly, very long secret handshake that Ariana made up, and then it made it into the movie. I was extremely nothing silly passionate. in Bobby Land. There's nothing silly on this. No, no nothing. Do you remember? Do you remember? It? I remember we did like something. Do you want to try it right now in front of the audience? <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Yes. I think we did like this, this, this. We did like ping, ping. Something like that. Oh, yeah. Poor memory. Poor memory, absolutely. I would be like America. I'm like
let's do it. And if we didn't get the snap right or the clap right, we're like, gotta do it again. We gotta do it again. It was like my favorite thing. I loved it. Uh, well, what did you know or think you knew about Barbie coming into this? <laughs> you are all right, <laughs> by the way. I don't know if you, that's what about being a CEO. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was uh, <laughs> sent the script. No, I think I was on a Zoom first with Greta and Noah and how, uh, I th you know, they, they wanted to talk to me about playing the CEO and uh, so I was immediately flattered and, and they were like, you're the person we, we kind of have envisioned to play this part. And I was like, great. And then, um, so they sent the script and then I read it and I was like, then I think another, like, okay, hold on, does, Mattel know about this? <laughs> have you have you run it? By, have they read it yet? And has the CEO read it? And they were like, they're all in. I'm like, what? How? Because I'm so used to the process of like, you know, we'll just try to convince anyone, everyone down the road. And I just couldn't believe uh, at just everything that you see up on that screen and how well executed it was and um and i was yeah and I, I i just i just loved that that role was just a gift and we um unfortunately we didn't get to hang out much with you guys all our stuff was very separate but we in a way the, the rest of the kind of mattel board yeah we would hang out in the corner and have our lunch and make each other laugh, you know, between. He's not lying. Will, Will always and, stays and on set. Jamie, we've been always, with everyone. I never leave. You never go to your trailer. Right. I saw Will taking a nap, like, on the most uncomfortable looking, like, plank of wood. And I was like, he has a trailer, but he's just, like, one of those actors that will stay on set, hang with everyone, talk with everyone. Like, yeah. And All the good things you ever thought about in the truth. Greta was, uh, you know, she's just kind of remarkable in the sense of like, very, you know, very much encourages anything you want to try. At the same time, would be like, you know, give you the, this, I don't know, just the most subtle kind of adjustment that makes all the sense in the world. And uh, um, it was just, it was just nothing but fun. I would think one of the hardest things about making this movie would be not laughing and ruining takes, especially with Will around. Um, and, and some of the, you, you mentioned the, the Mattel board, like those are some of the funniest improvisers you have in that scene as well, so. One of, um, I think, I don't even think I'd started filming yet. I just came for like a wardrobe fitting and and on, the, the CEO was there, the, 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 the Mattel people were there and I was like and they were like the CEO wants to meet and I was like really do I have to and, and, and he's this really strong figure uh, um, Israeli and I was and so we had a, a great meeting he was he's nothing but kind and I said to Greta like Am I supposed to impersonate him? And she's like, No, 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 no. Do whatever you want. And, uh, uh, but that was so funny to have to meet him right out of the gate. And uh, I just kind of said, I hope you like it. Uh, I'm gonna go for it. Yeah. Was who was the person who would break the most on set? I broke so much. I think it's in it's in like the final cut of the movie because. I went up to Greta and I was like, I can't, like, I, I'm sorry, I keep laughing, because I was just like watching Ryan have his meltdown, um, which I would never get bored of. And I would laugh so hard, and like, I would either look away or really try to like hide it. And Greta was like, look, if you were in this situation in real life, would you laugh? I was like, absolutely, I feel so uncomfortable about what I'm watching, and concerned, and baffled, that I would laugh. And she was like, all right, so great, just go and, and do what feels natural, and I, I break every second. Yeah, you did a lot of breaking. I, break. I, I would break so often. I try not to, but I. Could. There's so many comedic geniuses. I'm doing scenes with Kate McKinnon, with Ryan, with Will. I mean, like, it was so hard not to break, and I was so I, I couldn't. I couldn't not. 
Oh, you're forgiven. You're also the producer, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, they can't fire me. <laughs> um, I do want to talk some more about this whole ensemble, though, because it's, it's just fantastic from top to bottom. How did you go about sort of assembling this group, and, and why was it important to bring such diversity to Barbie Land? I don't just mean race. I mean, there's different body types. There's, you know, uh, uh, abilities, uh, all sorts of women. Yeah, and fortunately for us, we could follow Mattel's lead in that regard, because in 2016, they really expanded the Barbie line so that everyone is called Barbie and everyone's called Ken. And that level of like inclusivity is part of the reason that I could see a way forward with this film. If they hadn't made that shift, I, I don't know if I'd really, I just don't know how we tackle it. You know, it's, it just, I was really grateful um, for that. And and of course we wanted to make Barbie Land just this like amazing utopia. It just so happens that the Barbies are in more control than the Kens until they're not. Um, but it, it was, yeah, it was so fun, and the casting, it was a real card castle, but Greta and Noah wrote everyone's names, most people's names, into the script. When I picked up the script, it said, Barbie Marco, and it would have my line. Ken Ryan Gosling would have his line. Ken Simu would have his line. Gloria, being the human, actually had real name, but she knew it wanted, straight away, we knew we wanted to be America. Ariana was a find. We got to go through all the audition tapes, and we were like, kind of everyone, Unless they're, I can't think of anyone who had like a schedule. It's like every person Greta wanted would approach, would be like, yeah, I want to be a part of this. It was amazing and such a gift. Um, but it was important to do it kind of like piece by piece as you're building this castle so that you're building the right dynamic and group uh, with everyone. So, Did she write people's names in before she knew if they were committed to the film? Yeah, we didn't know if Ryan was going to do it. Really? Yeah, in fact, Ryan was like, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> and we were like, well, we're not taking no for an answer. <laughs> why? Ryan, why did you? Yeah, Ryan, what was that <laughs> doing this movie? Well, my life's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. That's so good. Did, did he say what his resistance was? I can't remember. I'd have to let Ryan speak to that. But um, no, but essentially it was just, you know, he was like, do you really want me to play Ken? And we were like, yeah, we can't accept anything but, but you. You're the, you're, the dream, you're the dream scenario. It was struck a, such, a, such a stroke of genius to cast him, but also to make Ken the antagonist, albeit a very sympathetic one. Um, can you talk about the conversations you had with Greta in, in finding the comedy and drama as, you know, we have this whole line where, where Ken is exploring his own self-worth? Yeah, no, I mean, that's what's so brilliant is that she can have, I mean, the, the highs and low in this movie that the characters go through are pretty extreme. There are a lot of extremes and being able to play in that space is so fun. And yeah, everyone just relished the chance to like scream and cry and be totally grounded and be hilarious and, um, yeah, it, it. I guess it. I guess because you have because she, she and Noah wrote the script and then she was directing it. It was like they already knew what the tone was. They had imbued it into the into the writing. So there wasn't you know as much as we sat there being like, okay, I, I don't know how this take is going to fit in. Like they got it. We know she's got it. Uh, well, I'm kind of bummed you didn't get to be part of a dance number. Normally you have to sing in movies. I had no idea they were. Yeah, no one invited me. So I but that actually, that was so incredible to get to finally see. Because like I said, my stuff was so separate. Yeah. So when I finally got to see the movie, I was like, this is incredible. Wow. Yeah. I mean it as the highest compliment when I say, in so many ways, this movie should not be as good as it is. I mean, when you think about, you know, oh yeah, it's based on a doll. And then, um, but I had heard, you know, I, I think actually there was a there was an interview with Will before the movie came out um, where you were talking about how brilliant the script was and how it worked on so many different levels. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it to kind of embrace Barbie in such a way to celebrate it at the same time to address, you know, uh, things where people have had issues over the years and that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, to just kind of sum it up in a way uh, with that much, like you said, musical numbers, the, the, the technique that was used in the filmmaking, uh, you know, the, the practical applications of old, you know, filmmaking as opposed to CGI, um, the amazing sets. When I walked on and saw these sets, that was, it, you just don't see that stuff anymore. Uh, and not to mention, kind of, I think what was so fun 
to play this petulant CEO who's <laughs> trying to, representing, I think, an attitude that still exists amongst, um, not any men in this room, of course. <laughs> but I think, you know, addressing the elephant in the room, which is like, look, women get to do a lot, so relax, you know? <laughs> they get to do enough, so much more than they used to. So stop asking, okay? Um, and literally and figuratively get back in the box. Yes. Um, that really spoke to me and, and to get to kind of be, a, I guess, to articulate that in a comedic, buffoonish way, um, to be the butt of the joke is important. Uh, and was an important part of the of the movie. That get back in the box moment started to feel like a horror movie. Yeah. And but in the middle of that party, you're crying and you don't know why. And you or, or you do know why, but you you don't expect to go to that place too. So you guys pulled this incredible rabbit out of a hat. That's so hard to do. One of the and for all those reasons, and I guess in I, I think the most amazing thing has being people's reactions, and I, as a producer, I want to make movies for people. I don't, I'm not making them for me, I'm not making them, you know, like, yeah, it's nice when the industry also pats you on the back, but it's like, no, there's, someone paid a ticket for you to entertain them, so entertain them, make a movie for them. Um, and the fact that this movie had so many people feeling like it was for them and hitting people, and the messages I've received, I've never experienced anything like it, like people saying, my, my, you know, 13-year-old niece was going through a really hard time. I can't tell you what this movie meant to her. Or like, you know, my six-year-old just turned to me and said, I expect better for myself one day now. Well, you know, like something, like I'm telling like crazy messages and I was like, oh my God, I've never been a part of something like this. But literally I can see like a, a shift in the, just the temperature in the world, which is really, really amazing to be a part of. and. Yeah, I'm so so grateful that I've got to be like in the eye of the storm and, and have a front row seat to this whole thing because it's been the most fun ever and extremely rewarding. Uh, before we go, I want to ask if everyone can just say something. Awesome. Awesome.